Japan has made history by becoming the fifth nation to soft land a craft on the move. And that too, Japan has done it in a very precise manner. So now we are joined by Vice President of Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, Ishi Yasuo-san. Ishi-san, please tell us, how is Japan feeling at this moment? Congratulations to you and Team JAXA. How is the mood in Japan now? Well, thank you very much for your message. And uh, we are very happy to, to have the successful landing of SWIM at the first, first uh, in history in Japan. And uh, we came, became a uh, fifth country in the world. And uh, uh, this moment was uh, watched by more than uh, 240,000 people through uh, the YouTube. And uh, 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 there was a uh, kind of uh, excitement in the news and the media. And we had uh, many congratulations from uh, uh, many people, including the Prime Minister Kishida. So we're very happy to that. So Ishi-san, thank you for that. So kindly tell us, uh, you know, generally a moon landing so far has always been within several kilometers radius with a, with a very wide area target. But Japan has done something very, very unique and historic to target mm -hmm. a landing within a crater that is barely mm -hmm. 100 meters in size, a fraction of the usual landing size. What mm -hmm. are the benefits of this approach? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, so far uh, we did not uh, uh, clarify uh, the, the precise uh, rounding or not, uh, we will confirm that through our uh, data uh, in may maybe in a few weeks. Uh, but uh, the, this uh, unique uh, uh, technology is uh, very useful for us. Uh, we can directly go to the interested area on the moon, such as extraction of water from soil, resource mining, or science investigation. Uh, this means we do not need the long distance transportation system on the moon. We believe this is quite important technology for the future lunar activity. Thank you, Ishisan. So to talk about uh, the way you executed this mission, you actually uh, launched uh, earlier in 2023. And then mm -hmm. towards uh, the start of 2024, here we are at the lunar landing. It's almost five months from launch to mm -hmm. landing. So why did you take this yeah. long approach when you can reach the moon in about one week? Well, uh, actually, uh, a stream was designed to go to the moon using small rocket initially. Uh, but uh, uh, for, for this reason, I mean, uh, using a small rocket, we decided to choose a trajectory maneuver uh, using swing by of sun and earth gravity uh, that, that would take us to the moon with very less fuel. And uh, uh, in fact, due to the availability of launch vehicles, uh, SRIM was uh, changed to, to, to be launched uh, together with CRISM on uh, H2A uh, last year. So, uh, but uh, the trajectory maneuver of the SRIM was not changed. Uh, that is the reason why SRIM needed five months from launch to the landing. Uh, we, we designed the, the slow trajectory, but we don't need much uh, uh, fuel. That is the reason. So you wanted to choose a fuel efficient route and you also had a small yeah. rocket to accom uh, ac accommodate two spacecrafts, which is why you use this approach. But at the same time, yes. SLIM is also very unique because of the fact mm -hmm. that this is a spacecraft that's weighing just about 700 kilos. For example, India's Chandrayaan was weighing at least um, more than five times as much as this. So a very heavy spacecraft has been used by all other countries, but Japan has used yep. very small spacecraft and efficient technology. Tell us more about right. this approach of landing a very small craft on the moon. Yeah. That is a very unique point of our mission, yes. So Ishisan, uh, also please tell mm -hmm. us, uh, Japan is a master of robotic technology and also mm -hmm. of nanotechnology and miniaturization. So in this yeah. particular mission, what we've demonstrated also is that um, the two lunar excursion vehicles or rovers on board yeah. are made by yeah. Japanese toy companies. These are the kind of rovers you're using. Tell us more about them, please. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the small robot has been developed by uh, Takara Tomi, which is the famous toy company in Japan. Uh, together with University of Doshisha and Sony, uh, under the collaboration research activity with JAXA, 
uh, JAX has been promoting open innovation activities with Japanese companies uh, targeting the development of future technologies in space exploration. Uh, this unique small robot is one of the many outcomes of these activities. Uh, Takara Tomi has already started selling the sa same type of small robot as a toy named Solakyu for children. That is very a uh, unique activity as well, yes. Okay, so uh, what are some of the experiments that you intend to do with these small robots on the moon? Because, you know, so far the ro uh, rovers we've seen on the moon are large machines, at least weighing about a couple of dozen kilos. But these are just about mm. two kilos, three kilos kind of small robots. So how can yeah. they do their job effectively, please? Well, uh, actually, uh, that small robot is... Uh, uh re released from the stream uh, just uh, before the landing and the small robot is is the capability to 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 have the uh, optical uh, photo uh, from from the small uh, uh, that means that the that small uh, robot can take a picture of the uh, stream uh, uh, the moment of the landing on the moon so uh, and uh, the small robot has the capability to have the uh, to to, to uh, communicate directly to the Earth, and we have the uh, a direct communication already with this small robot, and uh, we expect we can have the, such a, a nice picture from this uh, small robot. Uh, Ishisan, also, uh, mm -hmm. this kind of a first lunar landing by a country, for Japan particularly, will offer mm -hmm. really valuable lessons for future missions. Can you just share some mm -hmm. perspectives? Yes. Uh, well, next uh, mission to the moon will be called RUPEX, and uh, that will be uh, uh, realized together with Israel. And uh, uh, we are very much... Uh, uh we have learned a lot uh, from this mission and especially uh about the uh, uh environment uh, of the uh lunar surface and uh, uh the next mission Lupix, will provide the rover on the moon so uh, those uh experiment or uh experience or science data through SLIM can be uh, used for our next mission. Thank you, Shisan. So when you look at the landing site chosen by JAXA, it's the equatorial mm -hmm. region of the moon, which also the Apollo missions had gone to. And you've also chosen a crater. Some of the specific mm -hmm. reasons why you chose equator, because now the most um, in-demand zone on the moon is the South Pole. Why did you choose the equator, please? Well, I think uh, uh, to demonstrate this uh, precise landing technology, uh, it is uh, uh, not easy uh, to, to demonstrate it uh, around the, uh, the uh, polar area of the moon. Uh, we need uh, uh, enough uh, solar, uh, sun, uh, I mean the sunshine uh, during, the, uh, uh, during the descent and landing. Uh, that that is why we choose uh, uh, the the equatorial area for this uh, first demonstration mission. But uh, of course, uh, this uh, technology can be uh, utilized for the uh, uh, spacecraft in the future uh, to the mission to uh, the polar area of the moon. Okay, Ishisan, could you also tell us, uh, you know, about? Um the current status of the mission because the successful landing mm -hmm. uh, has happened successful soft landing has happened yeah. but after mm -hmm. that there were some troubles so just tell us uh, yeah. what we broadly know about it mm -hmm. well actually uh the latest information was not updated uh, from uh last night i mean the, uh, just after the landing and uh, uh, i believe the uh, slim project team is now focusing on uh, what happened uh, during the uh, the descent and the landing, and what is the uh, uh, cause of the trouble with the solar panel? And uh, what we know was that uh, we cannot uh, receive the solar power from the uh, solar panel array. 
uh, uh, but uh, we we can we don't we cannot uh, uh, know yet what is the reason why we cannot receive the the, the power from the solar array. Uh, that is the latest situation. I I, I think uh, soon we can provide uh, much more information about our situation on the stream to everybody. Okay. So Ishisan also tell us, uh, you know, about the future missions uh, that Japan is uh, planning with ISRO. So the configuration mm -hmm. is such that uh, a Japanese rocket will be used, Indian lander will be used. Can you tell us more? Okay. So uh, Lupex is. Uh, I, as I said, the LUPEX will be the uh, following mission to to stream to the moon, and the LUPEX will be launched by H3, uh, that is a Japanese rocket, and the transportation from H3 to and to the the moon, I mean the landing system to the moon, will be provided by ISRO. Uh, that is, that based on the technology is qualified by Chandrayaan three. The LUPEX uh, has the rover. Uh, which will uh, be developed by JAXA and ISRO. And LUPEX mission is a survey of water distribution near the surface of the moon. Uh, this is a basic concept. And then the knowledge about the lunar surface uh, will be, uh, how to say, the sci basically the science mission, yes. Okay. So thank you, Ishisan, for that. Uh, so also to talk about what is the current status? This has been in the planning stage for at least uh, three, four years now. So what is the current stage? When can we expect things to move further mm -hmm. uh, with regards to LUPEX? Well, uh, from uh, our colleague, uh, I, I know uh, we just finished the conceptual study on the LUPEX with Israel, and uh, we will start the real development activity soon. And uh, the launching date is not fixed yet, but uh, we expect uh, the PIX will be uh, launched in a few years, like uh, in year 2025 or 26. This is also about uh, SLIM mission in particular. So this is actually um, a mission with multiple uh, degrees of success. So you have minimum criteria of success, you have uh, mm -hmm. ideal criteria of success, and also you mm -hmm. have the extra criteria of success. Can yeah, you just tell yeah. us a little more, please? Well, uh, from my, our understanding, we uh, already uh, uh, achieved the uh, minimum success criteria and also the uh, full success criteria. Uh, but we are not uh, still uh, we are not uh, sure about the achievement of the uh, extra success. Uh, but uh, uh, normally speaking, the 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 full success is kind of uh, uh, how to say the real success of the the project. So uh, I think we can say uh, this is a normal situation of the project. Yes. So also, Ishisan, uh, Japan is a country that's known for uh, sincerity and perfection, particularly. So how are the Japanese uh, uh, teams uh, actually uh, seeing this mission? Because this is their hard work for several years. So how are they yeah. seeing this? How are they sort of, uh, you know, um, working on this now that they've, uh, you know, got, got on to a setback uh, midway? Well, uh... I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not... Uh, uh... I don't know the detail of the, uh, uh, the the project activity itself, but it took long time. And uh, but uh, our team, uh, I heard our team uh, ha worked hard uh, during the uh, the operation uh, for the descent and landing, and uh, uh, even with they had the, they faced the trouble with the uh, solar array. Uh, they overcome that and that uh, they co correct the enough data from SRIM. Uh, that is uh, uh, the, the everything I know. So Japan is a country known for precision and perfection. So with one perfect landing uh, by SLIM, uh, we believe that Japan will be able to pave the way for many more precise future landings on the moon. So congratulations to you and JAXA Ishisan. Thank you very much again. And uh, we are looking forward to, to collaborate with uh, uh, ISRO for the next mission. Thank you. Thank you, Ishisan, for making time and speaking to Beyond World is One just after the historic landing of the Japanese SLIM or Moon Sniper mission on the Moon's equatorial region. Thank you, Ishisan. Thank you.